one uh, it's been a long time since I've done a review on this channel and I'm here to review Empress Key uh, uh, just to start it off there will be spoilers so if you haven't seen the series I'm going to be spoiling pretty much everything that happens in here um, it's it's a pretty long series 51 episodes a lot to talk about so I'm gonna get right into it and as I usually do with these reviews I'm going to kind of talk about the ending and then I'm gonna talk about you know the rest of the stuff I liked and didn't like in the series and so on and so forth so Emperor's Key is one of the best series historical dramas I've ever seen just it's great from the acting to the soundtrack to the uh, makeup and the clothes and everything uh, to the cinematography everything in here is just really well done uh, it's well written it's just really a well done series it's one of the best historical dramas I've seen in a while uh, especially one that's this long you know 51 episodes that's a lot of uh, time consuming episodes to take in but it was well worth it now I really did love everything from the beginning to the end well until the final episode 51 because I don't know if anybody knows this but originally this was just 50 50 episodes but because of the ratings and the uh, and everything they they added on another episode and when I first saw the ending episode 51 I really didn't like how it ended because pretty much everyone dies at the end and I really didn't like that I would have preferred if they would have ended the series with the shot of her becoming like they did when they telegraphed at the beginning of the uh, the first episode they telegraphed her uh, as the Empress and I think that would have been better uh, having first when I first saw it I thought that would have been better if they would have just ended it right there where she's Empress but having gone back and watched the final episode again and letting things sink sink in and kind of really thinking about it I actually think it makes a lot of sense because here's the thing that's really what happens not exactly in history but that's what happens um most of the people die. The Yan Empire falls, and the uh, Emperor doesn't live. Uh, and as far as Empress Key, we don't know what happened to her after that. You know, uh, we don't know whether she was. I mean, we know that she left the Empire, but we don't know what, where she went, or we don't know why she left. Uh, were there people in the palace who were trying to kill her when the Yan Empire fell? And things like that. I did do a little bit of research. I don't know the story exactly, but I did my research on Wikipedia and I read up on it and whatnot. And what was said is that, you know, she left the kingdom, and that's all we know. That's all the stuff that was recorded. So, looking at the final episode, I'm like, that makes sense because everyone does die. Uh, Tatal, um, the emperor, you know, all these people die, and it's not a happy ending. Not that I was expecting a happy-go-lucky ending, but I was expecting it to end on a much lighter note. Like I said, ended it with her uh, becoming the Empress, and I think that would have just been fine if they would have done that. But seeing as how they set it up in the first episode, with her uh, looking at Wang Yu and stuff like that, and her crying, um, you know, tears coming out of her eyes, it makes more sense within the context of the story that they would end it like that. Uh, in the final shot of her choosing the Emperor over Wang Yu, I, th I think it makes sense, but there are some things I had a problem with uh, as far as how some of the characters were killed off. Uh, like Tatao, we just, we don't see how he died, but she's given information that he was killed in battle. And he was a great character, but I would have preferred to see what happened to him on the show rather than just them telling. But I did like how the crown, um, uh, a good way to t kill in our problems, caused the emperor. People were basically, Empress Key needed to be the, uh, the, the, uh, 
So, you know, fan of Vodic Orange will probably take a bow on the actual repairs that Hachiwan is a Jesse Lopes of us to be really top notch asset, you know, every day. And you can tell, like, it, it, the quality of this does feel like a film, like it feels like a really high budget historical, um, film. It's really just, it can stand out with easy some of the best historical movies out there as far as like, uh, any sort of Asian uh, historical movies go. It's just really that good in my opinion, but yeah, her acting is just fantastic, uh, she's really beautiful too, like, she just, just the costumes and the different clothing that they had her in, she looked great. And her character arc is just fantastic, one of the best character arcs I've seen, you know, her character transformation is just, um, it, it, it's really a joy to watch her go from, you know, from how she was in the beginning of the series to, uh, when she get, once she gets to the, um, the kingdom and the empire and whatnot, she changes because of the political stuff that's going on in the Yan Empire. I mean, people are trying to kill her. She has people in the empire she wants to kill. And her character transformation, I thought, was just really, really well done. The villains in here are really well done. Um, the actor who plays El Tamor, or I think that's how you pronounce it. And that's another thing. I, I'm not really good at pronouncing some of the names, so forgive me with that. But the actor who plays El Tamor, he is just great i've seen him in other things too but he is just knocked that out of the park as that character uh every time he was on screen and that theme music came off for him i was just glued to it because you know his villainy was just so fun to watch and um you know the stuff that he did was very underhanded and cruel but it was played so well that i just couldn't help but kind of clap at it because it was so well performed um that i think he is still the best villain in this series although although there are other villains that I did like in this series but I think he easily is just the best bad guy uh antagonist in this show just if he doesn't get an Oscar or something when they do the Korean drama awards I'm gonna be really puzzled at that because he just I, I just gonna see how you can't say that was not a great um performance so yeah, I liked him. Now I want to talk about uh, Wang Yu's character. His character I thought was done a real kind of disservice because in the beginning he gets some good character stuff with uh, Nanying. I think that's how you pronounce her name before she becomes uh, Empress Qi. They have some good chemistry and he gets some good character stuff. But once he gets, once we get to the Empire and the Yan Empire and stuff like that, that's where I think his character sort of starts to go downhill i mean he does have some good character stuff after that with the other with some of the um some of his uh servants and whatnot and when he meets up with that uh character be so there's some good character stuff there but the way he was killed off i thought was just i don't know it makes his character seem almost useless the way he was killed off by the emperor just uh I really didn't like that. It just seemed really, really forced, and it seemed really, really poorly thought out. And his character just goes out without a fight, so to speak, and I really hated that because I like Wan Yu's character in here, and the actor who plays him is just fantastic. He's given with some of the poorly start, thought out character stuff in here. I think he really um, put out a good performance with that. And then there's the emperor who 
I did not like the Emperor, but I don't think he's supposed to be a likable character. From what I've read on Wikipedia, he was kind of a spoiled brat type of uh, Emperor, you know, and it makes sense that with you know within the context of the story that he would act like that you know he's not i don't think he's supposed to be a character you're supposed to like i think you're supposed to really dislike him because he is spoiled he's very uptight you know you really really despise i mean he has some redeeming qualities but i really just hated his character and i also hated that of course um key empress key had to end up with him because i would have preferred that she ended up with wang yu but you know again this is based off real historical stuff and they had to follow that so i can accept it but i really just didn't like his character but it was well acted though just in terms of the stuff that he had to go through i mean he was being poisoned he was um political choices in terms of what he was going to do with uh Korea or I think this is pronounced the Kyoko uh, dynasty in Korea what he was going to do with them whether he was going to kill them off or have him just be a part of the Yan dynasty as a whole and that was interesting I mean the stuff with his mother or his mother figure you know uh, how she treated him as nothing more than a tool and whatnot and the relationship he had with El Tamor's daughter that he really didn't like her it was just really well done character stuff with him and you can I can kind of sympathize him with him but I still don't like his character so that's how I feel about those uh, characters you know and I also thought it was really unique that the final villain of the series the Eagle House and who he was I was just like wow that's crazy uh, I thought that was really well done uh, he really, I, I, you know what, I said El Tamor was probably the best villain in here, but I think the leader of the Eagle House and, you know, him being the Emperor's kind of, uh, I guess you could say housemaid, so to speak. You know, he's the one who brings him his dinner, his food and whatnot, and gives him information on what's going on in the palace. Giving, given that stuff... I think he's probably easily is equally as good as El Tamor as a villain. I mean, what he did with the Emperor and tricking everybody, he he really feels like a devil like figure in here. You know, I thought that was just wow, uh what a interesting type of villain in this historical drama. I don't think he was I don't think that's I think he's a made up character for the drama. Like I don't think he was there historically. Like, he might have been his housemate or whatnot, but I don't think there was a such thing as an eagle house, as far as I know, uh, and the information I looked up on uh, online and whatnot. But, yeah, I just thought his character was really interesting. I'm trying to get his name, but uh, it's not coming to me right now. But, yeah, he was just really well done. And I really liked how, you know, she developed a relationship with, like, Tatao and Bayan and whatnot, and then Bayan ended up going evil, you know, he ended up being, um, another El Tamor, and he said that if he ever became like that, you know, he wanted Tao Tao, his, um, his nephew to kill him off, and that's what happens, you know, but I also like how Tao Tao doesn't really, you know, he's, he's part of the Yan Empire, and he believes in the Yan Empire, but he's not totally on board with what his uncle's doing, so he really understands where Empress Ki, uh, is going with, uh, the Empire, where she wants to take it, you know, and I love that great line that she has with him where, uh, she tries to hide the money from him, but he finds out where the money is, you know, the gold and stuff like that, and, as you know she he knows what she's done but he's like you know i'm gonna let this slide and then she says what's more important um the yan empire or progressing a people as a whole you know it's not just oh we're going to be homogeneous and just go for the yan 
I'm actually willing to accept the fact that it's about humanity and not just about our empire. So I really like that stuff uh, with the back and forth with them as far as their friendship went. You know, uh, I like how, like I said, some of the other characters went uh, turned against her once El Tamor was out of the picture. I just thought the character stuff in here was just really, really uh, well done. And, you know, like I said, everybody just looks good in their part as far as the makeup and the clothing and whatnot. Uh, you know, there there's a lot of really cool side characters to latch on to. Uh and things of that nature. I just think if if you're really looking for a really well done historical drama with good acting, a good soundtrack, and something that's going to be engaging from beginning to end for 51 episodes, check this out. It's one of the best I've ever seen. I gotta give it a solid 9 out of 10. Just fantastic stuff. So, I'm gonna leave the review off here, and I am out. Peace.